All right, so we were able to identify um, both a maximum and a minimum of this function uh, by hand. Let's do the same thing, except uh, use the computer now. So first things first, we want to define our function. So then this will be 5 times x cubed minus 3 times x. Um, in order to find its derivative, we need to treat the input as a symbol. So we're going to find the symbolic derivative of that using our symbolic computing library here, SymPy. So first we say that x is going to be a symbol. And now we can oops, I'm going to run my, make sure you run your imports. And now we are going to find the derivative using psi.diff. We're finding the derivative of f of x with respect to x. All right, so it looks like it's 15x squared minus 3. That's exactly what we uh, came up with anyway. We'll use that to define a new function called df. That's our derivative. And that's going to be 15 times x squared minus 3. All right, so we got what we needed. We have the function. We have its derivative. Now, instead of having an input as a symbol, uh, let's change it to numbers. So we'll go from a domain of negative 2 to 2 should be enough, just based on what we saw when we plotted things by hand and or when we looked at it by hand. And sure enough, here we go. So the blue line is the original function, and the orange one is the derivative. And again, what we see is This was the max, and this is the min. And those are at those 1 over radical 5, or radical 5 over 5, however you want to think about it. Okay, We can actually solve um, for those values using the computer as well, using SymPy. So let's do that real quick as well. Clone cells again, we're, we're going to have x be a symbol again. And we wanted, um, you know, we have this function df of x. Right, that's 15x squared minus 3. We want to know when that thing equals 0. So SymPy has um, an equation operation where we can say df of x and 0 and that creates an equation object and then we can solve that. So this is setting up an equation. When does this derivative equal 0? And then we can solve that equation for x. And sure enough that we get those same numbers back and if we want to see that in nice pretty Display. There we go. So the computer is able to solve for the same sorts of things. Okay, that may be a handy way to check ourselves. Um, and sometimes, if we have a complex function, it may be an easier way to find and evaluate the derivative. All right, but um, same idea. And then, so what we could do is we could just go ahead and plug into our function for values on either side of that. Again, we used. Um, what did we use? Maybe, I don't know, we can use something else, negative 2. All right, so it's positive, so it's increasing before this point, and then at 0, it's negative, right? So it goes from increasing to decreasing here, so that's a maximum, and sure enough, that's what we found by hand, so same point, negative 5 over 5. And then if we just look one more right, at 2, now it's positive again. So it goes from decreasing to increasing. We must have a minimum. That's where that happens, radical 5 over 5. All right, we'll try one more uh, involving a trigonometric function. Do that next.